All right, we're live. Yes. Had a little technical difficulties with my internet, but the Lord said, you know what? This message is going live, so here we are. Good morning, everybody. Good to see you. I hope we're having a great day in Jesus. Welcome to part seven of our Closer Walk with Jesus series. We're going to begin um, with an old-fashioned hymn, as we always do, from the Soul Stirring Song Hymn Book. You say, why do you use the old, old hymn book, Sean? That thing's old. Listen, well, for one thing, it's because I know the hymns, <laughs> right? Uh, most of them, at least. And, and uh, But two is because there's a lot of good words in these hymns. You know, if, if you listen carefully to the lyrics of the songs, um, there's so much good stuff, right? It's not... Not to say that um, I agree with every single word in this book. This is obviously not the inspired word of God. It's just a hymn book written by man. But, you know, there's a lot of specific lyrics in this book that uh, have some really specific religious teachings. A lot of the gospel songs nowadays, um, they just have generic uh, uh, things that talk about God with no specific doctrine about Jesus. But that's in this book. So anyways... Um, Let's give some praises to our Lord Jesus today by singing number 162. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. There's a lot of things um, that happen in our lives, but uh, really we wouldn't have uh, we wouldn't have anything without God creating us, right? So without God, we would have nothing. So we have. Uh, we have something to praise. We have God to praise for giving us life and giving us everything. The Bible says that um, without him, talking about God, without him was not anything made that was made. <laughs> so um, let's sing for God today, for, uh, to God be the glory, all right? Hymn number 162. Let's, get, let's do this. Need a little drink. <clears throat> Hymn number 162. Here we go. <clears throat> To God be the glory, great things he hath done. So loved he the world that he gave us his Son, who yielded his life and atonement for sin, and opened the life gate that all may go in. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son, and give him the glory, great things he hath done. O oh, perfect redemption, the purchase of blood, to every believer the promise of God, the vilest offender who truly believes, that moment from Jesus a pardon receives. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son, and give him the glory, great things he hath done. Great things he hath taught us, great things he hath done, and great our rejoicing through Jesus the Son. But purer and higher and greater will be our wonder, our transport when Jesus we see. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people People rejoice, O oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son, and give him the glory, great things he hath done. Amen. Amen. We we're gonna be praising the Lord for all eternity. Those of us who are saved in heaven, we're going to heaven one day. Um let's praise God for that. Our opening reading today is in uh, Luke, the Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 16. This passage is one of the most famous passages in Scripture. 
um, that talks about the doctrine of hell. It's scary. Um, you know, Jesus taught us about hell. These are actually, this is actually Jesus' teachings. Um, it's about a certain rich man and a poor man. Uh, the rich man uh, lives a great life all his life, and then eventually, unfortunately, he didn't believe in Jesus, so he dies and goes to hell. The poor man didn't have all the luxuries of life, but he believed in Jesus, and when he died, he went to heaven. Many people think this passage is a parable. Um, I don't believe it's a parable. I think it's a real story, but um, that's not my sermon for the day, so let's just let's begin our reading, uh, Luke chapter 16. In the King James Bible, if you want to read along, we'll start in verse 19, and we'll uh, read to the end of the chapter. Here we go. Luke chapter 16, verse 19, the Bible says, There was a certain rich man, which was clothed in purple and fine linen, and fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate, full of sores, and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. And the rich man also died and was buried. And in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. And send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. And besides all this, between us and you there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. Then he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send him to my father's house, for I have five brethren, that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment." Abraham saith unto him, They have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one uh, but but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. And he said unto him, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. The word of the Lord. Greetings, my friends, my brothers, my sisters, my colleagues. It's Sean Elvis. It's good to see you. Like I said, we're in part seven today of our series, A Closer Walk with Jesus, where we're going through the life of Jesus backwards and reverse so that on uh, hopefully the 12th day of Christmas, we will conclude with part 12, the birth of Jesus on Christmas Day. Amen. Until then, let's continue in this opening reading. Um, in Luke chapter 16, I'm not going to discuss this in detail. I, I don't have time right now, but I want to focus on the last few verses in this passage. Um, look again, if you would, at Luke 16, verse 27. Let's read this again where uh, uh, the Bible says, Then he said, I pray thee, therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send him to my father's house, for I have five brethren, that he may testify unto them lest they also come into this place of torment. This is the rich man who's in hell um, talking to Abraham. And Abraham answers him and says, uh, <clears throat> he says, they have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. And the rich man answers and says, Nay, Father Abraham, if one went, a, if one went unto them from the dead, then they will repent. But look what Abraham reply, replies. He says, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded. Though one rose from the dead. You see, the rich man, he's burning in hell, and, and he's still burning to this day, unfortunately. Um, not because he lived a bad life, but because he didn't uh, believe on the Lord Jesus. 
Um, but anyway, he's begging that Lazarus uh, would uh, um, be resurrected from the dead and go uh, go back to his uh, his father's house and explain to them, hey, you guys need to believe in Jesus because you don't want to come to hell. This is a bad place to be. Um, but it's really in- in- interesting how Abraham responds. He says, he says, look at look at verse thirty one. He says, "They have Moses and the prophets. They have Moses and the prophets." Again, like I've been explaining throughout this entire series, Jesus is in the Old Testament, and that should be a sufficient. What we read in the Bible, what we read in this book, should be sufficient enough for us to put our faith in Jesus and be saved from hell. And he's saying, "Look, if people won't believe." In this book, then it's not going to matter if I if I raise somebody from the dead to go preach to them. <laughs> it's not going to make a difference. I mean, the rich man thought, "Hey, surely they'll believe if somebody comes back from the dead and and preaches to them and tells them about what's going on." But look at verse thirty-one. Abraham says, "That's not going to that's not going to matter." You know, there's some people that no matter how great of a miracle God performs. They're not going to give God any praise. They're not going to give him any credit. They're always going to have an excuse. So I just wanted to start off my message today in part seven by showing the significance and the importance of putting your faith in Jesus. Because if you don't put your faith in Jesus, you don't believe in this book. There's a place called hell. Scary place. So Jesus, um, we're going to look at some... uh, (laughs) Some great miracles of Jesus today, um, but the fact is that there's this real place called hell. And you know, the, the ultimate purpose that Jesus came is to save us from this place, right? Because there's people there right now that are burning in torments, just like this rich man. He's there right now. And man, he would love to have a drink of my water here. But anyway, um, people who uh, refuse the gift of Jesus refuse to believe on the Lord Jesus, this will end up being their uh, fate. And they'll be tormented in hell day and night. I mean, to God be the glory, amen, that that he sent us his son, Jesus, that those of us who believe in him won't have to go there. Won't have to go there. We, we put our faith on Jesus. We believe the Bible. Praise God. Praise God for that. Can I get an amen? Anyway, I've seen a, I've seen a lot of evidence. I've seen enough evidence in my life to know that this book, the Bible, the King James Bible, is uh, the true word of God. I mean, I can look at creation. Look at all this nice stuff. It didn't just happen like that. Somebody designed it. It's too, it's too amazing to not have a designer behind it. And, you know, I can, I can read the or- overwhelming evidence in the Bible that suggests that Jesus rose from the dead. That's not hard to see. I mean, we can look in the Bible and read that it says, hey, everybody's a sinner. I mean, I could look at my own life. I could look at the people around me. I can see, hey, yeah, everybody, everybody's a sinner. This book's true. There's, there's, there's no reason not to believe it. Um, and anyway, I, I just wanted to say that <laughs> I'm going to heaven, right? I'm saved from going to this place of torments, hell. Um, not because I'm a, I'm an amazing person, right? It's because I accepted the free gift of Jesus, the sacrifice of Jesus, and that's what these series, that's what this series is about, praising. Jesus. Um, unfortunately, there's a lot of people who who don't believe in Jesus, and uh, um, they refuse to put their faith on Jesus. And so, anyway, my question did my question today. Excuse me. And the topic of my sermon today is this: What does it take for you to give God praise? You know, I mean, sure, I'm sure you believe in Jesus. You're you're watching this message, but. What does it take for you to praise him, right? Do you have to see somebody come back from the dead? Do you have to see a great miracle? Now, I remember in in part five, we talked about picking up our cross daily and following Jesus. And today I want to ask the question, what's it going to take to praise God? Are you going to praise God every day, right? Is picking up your cross and and giving God praise and glory and and singing uh, and bringing praise to his name is, is two different things. I mean, is salvation exciting enough for you? Is it exciting enough that Jesus died for your sins and offered you free access to go to heaven, saved you from this place, this hell of torment? 
Is that enough for you to get excited about praising God? Or are you going to wait for some extraordinary miracle of uh, maybe somebody being raised from the dead or or uh, maybe God giving you some great healing in your life or making you rich or whatever? You know, as, as Christmas approaches, further and further we get closer to Christmas and people uh, people are going to receive gifts, Right? Well, let me let me ask you this. What if you took away all the gifts from Christmas? Took away all the gifts, took away all the lights and the decorations and the Christmas trees and and the ornaments. You took away all the great music, the Christmas music, amen. Um let's say you took all of that out of Christmas. Do you think people would still get excited about Christmas, about the birth of Jesus? Would it still have that same zeal? Would kids still wake up excited in the morning? What's it going to take for you to give God some praise and some glory in your life? Does it take all kinds of gifts? Is God going to have to give you all kinds of gifts and treasures? Is he going to have to light up your life like a Christmas tree? What's it going to take? Or is salvation, is Jesus Christ enough? Friends, in today's video, we're going to look at three amazing miracles that Jesus performs and I want you to think as we're as we're looking through these miracles is everything that Jesus already did for you in your life enough is everything that he already did that's recorded in the Bible enough is creation enough are these miracles enough for you to give God praise or do you or do you want more do you need more in order to praise God anyway with that uh, if you're already in Luke we're going to go backwards to uh, Luke chapter 13. If you have a King James Bible, let's open up to Luke chapter 13. While you're turning there, if you're still turning, I'll read for you Psalms chapter 51, verse 15. The Bible says, O oh Lord, open thou my lips, and my mouth shall show forth thy praise. We should be using our voice to praise God. That's why I begin with the soul-stirring songs and hymns. That's why I start with this song. The Bible says we're supposed to praise God with our voice. We're going to see here a miracle that Jesus performs and how the people praise God for it. Amen? Look at uh, Luke chapter 13, starting in verse 10. The Bible says, where am I at? <clears throat> Luke 13, verse 10. And he was teaching. Let's talk about Jesus. In one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. There he is in the temple. Jesus always at church. <clears throat> and behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity. Eighteen years and was bowed together and could in no wise lift up herself. And when Jesus saw her, he called, he, he called her to him and said unto her, Woman, thou art loose from my infirmity. And he laid his hands on her, and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. The first thing I wanted to point out here is that this woman, um, she's obviously crippled. Um, but, but what I wanted to mention is she's at church. She's at the synagogue where Jesus is teaching, right? I mean, <laughs> she's already praising God, amen? I mean... She didn't need some miraculous sign from heaven to get up and go to the synagogue that day and, and say, I'm going to praise God today. You know, I can't walk. I can't. My life's not going very good, but I'm going to go to church and I'm going to praise God. You know, she was already doing that. And I also want you to notice this, that after Jesus healed her, who did she give God praise to? Or excuse me, who did, <laughs> who did she give praise to? It says right here. In verse 13, and glorified God. She gave God the glory. She said, praise God. I mean, she already believed in God. She already believed in Jesus. This miracle didn't cause her to believe in Jesus. She didn't need no miracle or no sign to be at church, to go to church in the morning. She was already there. Maybe that's how we need to be. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> You think? Maybe we should be giving God glory and praise every day. 
We, we shouldn't expect to see some miracle. Oh, God, I'm not going to praise you unless you give, some, give me some miracle. I mean, look at this woman. If anybody, if anybody had an excuse to be bitter towards God and to not make it to church that day, I mean, she couldn't even stand up to give God, to give God praise. I mean, it says in verse 11, and could in no wise lift up herself. It wasn't even like she couldn't even get up. If anybody had an excuse not to praise God, it was probably this woman. But no, she was there praising God anyways. She didn't require any fancy miracles. This woman wasn't, wasn't living a wicked lifestyle. You see, she was at the synagogue. She was at church. She wanted to hear the word of God. Let's look at our next passage. Go to uh, Luke chapter 18 and go forward in the, in the Gospel of Luke. Chapter 18. This is another great miracle that Jesus performs where he's going to uh, give people their sight. Luke chapter 18, starting in verse 35. The Bible says, And it came to pass that as he was come nigh unto Jericho, a certain blind man, sat by the wayside begging, begging, and hearing the multitude pass by, he asked what it meant. And they told him that Jesus of Nazareth passeth by. And he cried, saying, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Remember in Luke 16, we read, uh, 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 Laz uh, the ri excuse me, the rich man in hell saying, Abraham, have mercy on me. Sounds familiar? Anyways, this guy cries saying, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Verse 39, and they which were before rebuked him and he should hold his peace or that he should hold his peace. But he cried so much the more, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Verse 40, And Jesus stood and commanded him to be brought unto him. And when he was come near, he asked him, saying, What wilt thou that I should do unto thee? And he said, Lord, that I may receive my sight. It's a blind man. Verse 42, Jesus answers him and says, Receive thy sight. Thy faith hath saved thee. And immediately he received his sight. And followed him, glorifying God. And all the people, when they saw it, gave praise unto God. Amen. Again, we see praises going up to God. Praises going up to God for the great things that God is doing. But what I love about this passage is, this blind man, he didn't need some great miracle to praise God. He didn't say, God, unless you give me my sight, I won't believe in you. <laughs> he already had faith in Jesus. He already knew, hey, Jesus is the Messiah, he's the son of Nazareth. As soon as he heard, hey, Jesus is around here. Jesus is here. Jesus, I need you. <laughs> Help, have mercy. I mean, how do we know that he already had faith? Look at verse 42. Jesus said unto him, receive thy sight, thy faith hath saved thee. Tells the man, thy faith has saved thee. He already had faith in Jesus. He already knew what Jesus was capable of. He already believed that Jesus had the power to heal him. I mean, he was happy to just know that Jesus Christ, the son of David, was there. He was already rejoicing. Yes, Jesus is here. I have a chance to, be, to, to have my sight back. Now, I already talked about it before in previous messages, um, how once you put your faith on the Lord Jesus, the Holy Spirit enters you, enters into your heart. You become a new creature and lives there inside of you permanently. I mean, how much closer can Jesus get to you, amen, <laughs> than living inside of you? I mean, this guy was excited that Jesus was just in his city passing by. I mean, nowadays... We could have Jesus literally living inside of you through the Holy Ghost. I mean, that's something to get excited about. And praise God for that. Amen. Much closer do you need to get with Jesus? I mean, we're talking about having a closer walk with Jesus. I mean, you can't get any closer than putting your faith on him and he comes and lives inside of you. That's, that's something to praise God for. Um, but anyway, this guy, this blind man, he prays, he, he prays, excuse me, he prays for mercy 
Um, mercy meaning, hey, I don't deserve to have my sight back, Lord. I don't deserve it. Um, I'm asking for a little bit of mercy here, right? He knew that he didn't deserve to have his 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 uh, his, his his eyesight back and restored. Um, and you know, maybe that's how we should be too. You know, we need to be willing because I think this 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 blind man he's he's gonna praise Jesus either way. Whether Jesus restored his sight or not, it was he wasn't going to affect the, how he praised God. And uh, you know, I think that's maybe how we need to be. You know, maybe we need, we need to pr we need to pray to God and and say, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. You know, I don't deserve what I'm about to ask you for and pray for, but you know, I'm going to praise you either way. <laughs> either way, if you answer my prayers or not, I'm still going to praise you, Lord. Still going to serve you. Still going to read my Bible. Still going to get excited and tell everybody about you. But please, Father, show me some mercy. <laughs> please, Jesus. And you know, what did Jesus tell him? He said, your faith has saved you. This man truly believed in God's mercy. I mean, when you pray for God to have mercy on you and answer your prayers, do you really believe it? Do you really have the faith that, yeah, you know, God is merciful enough. He, he's going to show me mercy. He's going to do this for me. Because if you do, Jesus said, thy faith has saved thee. You know, if you have the faith of a grain of mustard seed, you could move mountains. Jesus said, you can ask anything in Jesus' name and it will be done unto you. But the question is, how much faith you got? How much faith is in your heart? I mean, I love how Jesus confirms here that we're saved by faith, right? He said, thy faith has saved thee. It's not of works, lest any man should boast. There's nothing, I mean, Jesus didn't uh, heal this blind man because he was screaming the loudest, right? He said, "He said, you know what, I'm going to restore your sight because you were the loudest person here. <laughs> or I feel sorry for you. No, no. He said, you're going to receive your sight because you have faith. That's why. You have faith. Anyway, let's go to our third miracle. I saved the best miracle for last. John chapter 11. John chapter 11. Arguably, arguably one of Jesus' greatest miracles in the Bible. God truly, truly sure is good to us. Amen. He truly is our, our great God ever. Now, we're not going to read the whole story here. It's, it's pretty long. Um, but I'll just summarize it a little bit for us and we'll, uh, to get us going. Basically, if you look at verse 1 uh, in John chapter 11, verse 1, it says, Now a certain man was sick named Lazarus. This is not the Lazarus of Luke chapter 16, by the way. This is a different Lazarus. But this is the Lazarus of Bethany, the town... Uh, of Mary and her sister Martha. And, and then look at verse 4. Uh, it says, When Jesus heard that, he said, This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. So basically, you have this man who loves Jesus. His name's Lazarus. He's fallen ill. Um, to the point where he could die any day, right? This sickness could kill him. And uh, Lazarus is is actually the brother of I, I think Martha, and um, who who was and Mary, uh, who was very close to Jesus. So they're all very close friends with Jesus, and they and they wanted uh, Jesus to perform some kind of miracle, some kind of healing. On him before he died, right? To save him from death. But Jesus, look what he says, verse 4. This sickness is not unto death. But but he did have a terminal sickness. He was he was clearly going to die from this. Um, at least uh, so, it, so, it, so it appears. But Jesus knew. He foreknew that, hey, you know, it's not ultimately going to lead to his death. <laughs> Jesus eventually would heal Lazarus, but not the way that they expected. Okay, not the way expect, not the way he expected. Sometimes we'll pray for things in our life, and God will have us go through a trial first, and because we can't see the end, we can't see the end. 
Um, but Jesus can. But anyway, um, back to the story here. Jesus, he, he leaves. Um, he stays for a while, but he doesn't heal Lazarus yet. And uh, he eventually leaves uh, leaves to Judea with um, some of his uh, apostles. And along the way, um, he tells them that, uh, hey, we have to go back. We have to go back to Lazarus because Lazarus uh, has, has fallen asleep. And and they, they think Jesus is really talking about uh, sleeping. Like, he, oh, he just fell asleep. Um, look at verse 14, if you will. Uh, John chapter 11, verse 14. And they said unto and, 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 or excuse me, then said Jesus unto them, unto his apostles, plainly saying, Lazarus is dead, right? So if you look at uh, um, verse 13, it says, How be it Jesus spake of his death, but they thought that he had spoken of taking of rest in sleep. So they think Jesus means he's really sleeping. Um, and then Jesus tells them straight up, like, no, no, guys, I mean he's dead. He's dead. Um, the apostles thought that uh, Jesus meant he, he's just sleeping when he said sleeping. But um, what I what I, my, well, my point here is is that uh, when why would Jesus say that he's sleeping? It's because he wasn't really dead, right? He didn't go to hell. When when he when he took his last breath, he was he actually went to be with the Lord in heaven. He was in heaven. That's why Jesus said, "Hey, he's just sleeping. He's just he's relaxed." Um, what I mean is, even though he was dead physically, his body, his flesh was was gone. His spirit, because he believed in Jesus, because he had faith in Jesus, he went to heaven. He was he was uh, with God. That's why Jesus didn't say he's dead. He's just sleeping, and you know that's what's going to happen to us. We're not going to go to hell if we believe in Jesus. We're not going to go where that rich man uh, in Luke 16 went. When we take our last breath, we're going to heaven. Amen. Praise God for that. So, um, all that to say, you know, so, um, Lazarus is tech is technically dead in the flesh, but he's not dead. He's just sleeping. He's with the Lord. Um, anyway, look at verse 20. Look at verse 20. I want you to see, uh, when he goes back and he talks to Martha, what, what happens in this conversation. Actually, let's just start in verse 17. It says, uh, the Bible says in verse 17, then when Jesus came, he found that he had lain in the grave four days already. So Lazarus has been dead four days. Now Bethany was nigh to Jerusalem, about 15 furlongs off, and many of the Jews came to Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. So everybody's coming, uh, coming to comfort him. Lazarus is dead. Everybody's sad. And look at verse 20. Then Martha, as soon as she had heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. But Mary sat still in the house. Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou hast been here, my brother had not died. But I know that even now, whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it thee. And Jesus said unto her, thy brother shall rise again. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. One day, uh, all of us believers will take our last breath. Our flesh will die. But we will rise again. Amen. Um. Anyway, so G Jesus knows exactly what's going on here. He says, look, Lazarus, he got sick and died, but it was for the glory of God. You don't understand it yet. Don't worry about it. Lazarus is coming back. And then Martha, look how she answers him in verse 24. She said, I know that he shall rise in the resurrection at the last day. See, Martha thinks that Jesus is talking about the resurrection, Lazarus of the last days, right? Where everybody's going to... Uh, be resurrected and get uh, uh, through Jesus Christ in the last days. But look what Jesus says to her in verse in verse uh, 25. Jesus said in her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? And let's just read what she answered. She said, yes, Lord. I believe that thou art Christ, the Son of the God. So she still doesn't understand that, hey, Lazarus is about to be resurrected from the dead right now. <laughs> right now. She thinks it's going to happen way later at the end of the world um, with, with everybody else. But no, no, Jesus means right now. <laughs> um, so Jesus tells her plainly, uh, straight up, though, I love this. He says, 
Whosoever, look at verse 26, whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. One of my favorite verses in the Bible, another great passage talking about how we're not saved by works. We're saved by what we believe. Do you believe in Jesus? And you shall never die, the Bible says. I love that. Amen. Praise God for those beautiful words. Thank you, Jesus. We're saved by faith, not of works. It's only through faith in Jesus. Jesus is the resurrection and the life. Nothing good in your life is going to happen. There's nothing going to be praiseworthy that's going to happen in your life unless it's through the name of Jesus, through God. That's why we need to praise God because he... He's the one uh, who makes all things happen. All, uh, all, anything good that's going to happen. Anyway, only through Jesus can we have everlasting life. I mean, that's something to praise God for. Now, I don't think necessarily that uh, we have to see, physically see people resurrect from the grave in order to believe it and give God the glory for it. But again, uh, we're going to have to have the, uh, the faith to just uh, believe the Bible that um, these kinds of things happen and that they're going to happen. But anyway, let's get on with the story. If you look at verse, uh, where is it? Verse 35. Verse 35, we have the shortest verse in the whole Bible. Jesus wept. So they're, they're all crying over uh, the death of Lazarus. So um even even though Jesus knew that Lazarus was going to be re- resurrected very shortly, um, he still wept. He missed his friend, Lazarus. You know, Jesus loves us. He loved Lazarus. And he loves us, right? He knows that what we're going through in our lives, all the, all the tr- uh, troubles that we're, um, that we're facing. Um, and Jesus has feelings for us. I, I just love, I just love to know that, uh, it's nice to know that our God, our great God who, who knows everything, he's all powerful, and, and <laughs> that he actually cares about us enough to sit down and cry for us, right? He knows what we're going through in our lives. I mean, our, our Lord Jesus is, is truly a God who's worthy to be praised, amen? You know, I think, I think of uh, kings nowadays, and they don't really care about us, right? Like, like uh, the president of the United States, you think he, he's going to care if I'm, if I'm going through a trial or I die? No, not really. He's not really going to cry over me. Um, but Jesus did. You know, Jesus will cry, over, uh, will cry over us. He cares about us. But let's see how good um, Jesus is to Lazarus here and, and to the people there. He performs this great miracle. Uh, let's just read it. Let's just read it. Starting in verse 38, uh, the Bible says, Jesus, therefore, again groaning in himself, cometh to the grave. It was a cave, and a stone lay upon it. And Jesus said, Take ye away the stone. Martha, the sisters of him that was dead, saith unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh, for he hath been dead four days. And Jesus said unto her, Said I not unto thee, that that if thou wouldest believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God. Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee, for thou hast heard me. Again, I love how Jesus thanks the Father before anything even happens yet. Anyway, verse 42, And I I knew that thou heardest me always, but because of the people which stand by, I said it, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. I want you to notice how Jesus pauses for a moment here before he uh, just performs this great miracle. Just to remind Martha, hey, remember I told you that, that, uh, that you would see God's glory <laughs> if you believed in me? Like look what he says in verse uh, 40. He said, said I not unto thee that if thou wouldest believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God. He's reminding her, hey. Before you see this great miracle that's going to happen, just remember that uh, I told you this is going to happen. I told you that it was your faith, what you believed in, that's about to cause this. He wanted there to be no doubt in her mind, and I'm sure all the people that were standing nearby 
He wanted there to be no doubt in anybody's mind that this wasn't just some random event that was about to happen. This was going to be the power of God. This was going to be through Jesus Christ, through, through their faith in Jesus, through what they believed in, that was uh, going to create this miracle. And again, notice that it was all by faith. He says, If thou wouldest believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God. So Jesus is going to perform this miracle um, in order to, uh, uh, not in order to get them to believe. They already believed. But um, but anyway, let's, let's read on. Let's read on. Uh, John chapter 11, verse 41. We already read that. Sorry. <laughs> My notes are... A little backwards. Uh, we're actually in verse 44. Let's continue verse 44. Or verse 43, sorry. Verse 43, and, and, when, and when he thus had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead come forth bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was bound with him, or excuse me, and bound about with a napkin. And Jesus said unto them, Loose him and let him go. Amazing, amazing. Um, then the Jews, which came to Mary and had seen the things which Jesus did, believed on him. I'll stop there. Jesus! How did you do that? How did you resurrect? Man, could you imagine? If I if I would have seen that, I'd, I'd have been speechless. I mean, what do you say to something like that? You, you Imagine you have a friend. He's dead for four days. You're crying for him. You're, the funeral's about to happen. Everybody's coming over to visit, and then Jesus says, Nah, wake up, wake up, and boom, he just wakes up, and you're just like, <laughs> I mean, that's, that's almost scary for me to think of that. But anyway, um, this, this miracle that Jesus performed eventually leads to the plot uh, to kill Jesus. Jesus was just getting simply too famous, too powerful, um, infamous, really. Famous, infamous, something like that, and uh, because he, because Jesus, he was doing all these great miracles, and this one just set it off. This one put him on the map um, and put a target on him, because Jesus was exposing the leaders of his day. They were really starting to hate him um, for exposing them for uh, their hypocrisy and all these things, and so they they really set out to kill him at this point. And uh, there's more I could say on that topic, but uh, not today, not in this message. Um, so, uh, back to my message and, and just to wrap things up here today, um, what is it going to take for you, for us to give God glory, you know, for us to believe in Jesus? Do you believe in Jesus just because of Moses and the prophets of what you read in the Bible? Or do you need to see somebody rise from the dead before you give God praise, you know, for you to, what's it going to take for you to pick up your Bible and get excited about reading it and get excited about sharing other people, what you read and what you learned. What's it going to take for you to give God praise? Jesus, here today we saw three miracles, three amazing miracles that we saw. Um, we saw Jesus heal the, heal the crippled woman. He healed her. He gave sight back to a blind man. And, and he even resurrected Lazarus from the dead, who'd been dead for four days, I think, God has proven himself enough to deserve our praise. What do you think, you know? Um, but I, I, I think that, you know, sometimes in our lives, you know, we, we just get so focused on, on the things of, of our life that are going wrong and, and stressing us out and, we, and, and um, the things that just aren't going our way, right? And we, could, and we can get stuck in weeping mode and crying and, uh, you know, and I'm not saying that you shouldn't... Um, worry and about things that are going bad but but uh just don't forget to give god the praise don't forget that god knows what's coming down the line and you know maybe there's a reason maybe there's a reason that things are happening in your life uh just like uh lazarus jesus said lazarus is sick for a reason and that reason is for the glory of god so maybe uh uh, God wants to use whatever bad situation we have in our life to show other people that, uh, hey, God's God's in control. God's got everything covered, right? Because uh, those of us who believe, we believe God. We don't need to see the miracles. But, you know, there's some people 
who or you know maybe there are people who do believe but you know they're going to get more encouraged when they see God do something great right like all these miracles these people already believed in God but once they saw the great miracles that just fired them up just the more right gave them another boost to say wow look how great my God is I mean I knew he was powerful but I man I, I never seen nothing like that amen Maybe sometimes in our lives we have to go through something crazy, some kind of trial, just so that God could pull us out of it and roll that big stone out of our uh, out of our lives' way, and and just to get us fired up and excited and say, "Wow, there is a God. God is powerful." And then when we get excited, then the rest of those around us get excited. So anyway, that's my message for the day, friends. Um, if we want to get a, a little closer. With Jesus Christ, first of all, we need to believe in him, of course. Thy faith has saved thee, the Bible says. But uh, secondly, you know, we need to give God praise. If we want to get close to Jesus, we need to give God the praise. You know, Jesus uh, Jesus was always praying God and giving God thanks. And Jesus stresses throughout uh, all these passages, faith, the importance of faith, the importance of believing you know, so I think, you know, we should be giving God praise without necessarily having to see the great miracles. But when these great miracles do happen, they should fire us up. They should really fire us up. And cause those around us to also give uh, God praise. And, and like I said, I don't want to beat a dead horse, but like I said, uh, maybe we're going through something, a trial in our life, just so God can get us through it. See us through it, and we can give glory to Him, and it'll just fire everybody up, every up, everybody up around us. Anyway, that's my message for the day, guys. Um, Jesus said, "Thy faith has saved thee." He said, "Because thou believest, thou will see the glory of God." That's what He told Mary. So, as the holiday season comes closer and closer to Christmas, we need to keep making sure that we're praising God. Amen. We don't need to necessarily see the miracles and get all the gifts. We need to be praising God anyways. Um, so let's keep our sights on God through the holiday season. Because God is powerful. And he, he can turn any situation, even a death of a loved one, into a miracle, into a blessing in our lives. So let's get, uh, let's get excited for the Lord. Let's praise God this week and let's share with others um, all the great things that God has done. You know, I'm pretty excited to... Uh, to continue this series God's firing me up and I'm hoping I'm firing you up too as well uh, to just serve God more through the end of this year and into next year in 2021 amen praise God all, all of this is for the glory of God it's not for my glory it's for uh, it's so God can get the glory anyway that's my message for the day guys um, <laughs> go thank somebody uh, go thank God what, what he's done for you lately and, and give him some praise for it don't wait don't wait to praise God, because if we may, if we wait, excuse me, we uh, we might miss out on on the wonderful miracles that God has in store for us in our lives. We need to have the faith first, and always give God the praise. Anyway, that's my message for the day, guys. God bless you, and as always, I'm going to close in prayer, and of course, give God the last word. So if you want to read along. Um, I'll be in Psalms chapter 145. God bless you and thank you for listening. Let's bow in prayer. Oh dear Heavenly Father, what a message. What a miracle. Raising Lazarus from the dead. Amazing. It just it, it it's, gives me chills just reading it, Lord. I couldn't imagine being there and seeing it with my own eyes. But Lord, I thank you for uh, performing these miracles and recording them in the Bible so that we can read about them and uh, try to picture them and visualize them and relive them, Lord. And it's a blessing to be preaching it, Lord, and it is your word. I do uh, thank you for allowing me the opportunity to preach your holy word. Anyway, Lord, uh, <laughs> from time to time in our lives, uh, we don't understand the end from the beginning but you do lord and you know everything that's going to happen that's how powerful you you are lord lord i just ask that uh 
You give us the the courage and the strength to go through our trials in our life, uh, even though we don't see it, and to just trust you and to believe in you, Lord, so that uh, we could eventually see your glory and uh, give you praise for it. Lord, I ask that you help us see uh, the great works that you're doing in our lives so that we can glorify you. A lot of times we don't even see the things that you do for us and we don't recognize it and we apologize, Lord. Forgive us for that. Excuse me. Lord, uh, help us see that it's you who's working in our lives. And Lord, uh, help us remember that we don't deserve it. It's all your mercy. We didn't deserve your 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 son, Jesus, but you were uh, gra- gracious enough and merciful enough to give it, uh, give give him to us, Lord, because you because you love us, and uh, we 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 love you too, Lord. And uh, just just the fact that you sent us your son ought to be reason enough for us to praise you, Lord, and help us not forget that. Help us not get stuck. And too focused in in the trials going on in our life to uh, to miss all the great things that you're doing in our life, Lord, and and give you glory, because because Lord, you could even use all the trials and the bad things in our life uh, um, to create a miracle, to get people fired up, and to help everybody glorify you more, Lord. I uh, I ask that you. Bless the people who hear this message and bring a great miracle in their life. Whatever they're going through, Lord, I ask that you hear their prayer and and that you let your the power of the Holy Spirit enter them and give you glory and, and see their faith, Lord, and, and create a, just a miracle in their life that they can praise you for and, and get everybody around them fired up. Lord Jesus, I also ask that you use this, this series that I'm preaching to get people fired up and and to praise you more, Lord. Lord, I want to see uh, see your name lifted up more in 2021. And uh, and I just want to get closer with you, Jesus, in the holidays uh, ahead. We love you, Lord. We thank you for everything that you do. And we're going to praise you forever and ever. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you guys. Uh, like I said... Well, as always, we're giving God the last word. If you want to read along, Psalms, chapter 145, I thought, what greater way to close this message than with a song of praise from God's word. Anyway, God bless you. Thank you for listening. Have a great day in Jesus. Psalm 145. We're going to read the, the whole psalm. Psalm 145, I will extol thee, my God, oh, my King, and I will bless thy name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised, and his greatness is unsearchable. One generation shall praise thy works to another and shall declare thy mighty acts. I will speak of the glories, the glorious honor of thy majesty and of thy wondrous works, and men shall speak of thy might and of thy terrible acts, and I will declare thy greatness. They shall abundantly utter the memory of thy great goodness, and shall sing of thy righteousness. The Lord is gracious, and full of compassion, and slow to anger, and of great mercy. The Lord is good to all, and his tender mercies are over all his works. All thy works shall praise thee, O Lord, and thy saints shall bless thee. They shall speak of the glory of thy kingdom, and talk of thy power to make known to the sons of men his mighty acts and the glorious majesty of his kingdom. Thy kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and thy dominion endureth throughout all generations. The Lord upholdeth all that fall, and raiseth up all that all those that be bowed down. The eyes of all wait upon thee, and thou givest them their meat in due season. Thou thou openest thine hand, and satisfy the desire of every living thing. The Lord is righteous in all his ways, and holy in all his works. The Lord is nigh unto all them that call upon him, and all that call upon him in truth. He will fulfill the desire of them that fear him. He will also hear their cry, and will save them. The Lord preserveth all them that love him, but all the wicked will he destroy. 
my mouth shall speak the praise of the Lord and let all flesh bless his holy name forever and ever. Amen. Amen.